Welcome. Join us for the next few minutes as we explore the district's flood history, get future flood risk insights, and better understand what can be done to reduce flood risk and flood impacts. Have you ever been caught in a downpour, seen a flood headline, or heard about a harrowing flood rescue? Flooding does happen here in the District of Columbia. Are you familiar with the history? While the risks are real and may worsen with climate change, there is a lot that you and your government can do. Why is the district vulnerable to flooding? It's because of its location and elevation. Some of the district's land is at low elevation, and this low land is bounded by two rivers, the Potomac and the Anacostia. These rivers flow to the Chesapeake Bay and are connected to the bay by tidal forces, making the city susceptible to three major flood types, freshwater riverine, interior stormwater, and coastal tidal storm surge. The risk of interior stormwater flooding is increased by high urbanization and aging infrastructure. Sewer systems can be overwhelmed. Experience shows that river water flowing in the Potomac and Anacostia can exceed their stream channels, overtop their banks, and flood the land. Flood water that comes down the Potomac River can also cause flooding in the Anacostia, as was the case in the 1936 flood. This is a large river with a 14,000 square mile watershed. This is an area that is nearly 220 times the size of DC. Heavy rain and snowmelt in this Potomac watershed can cause the river's water level to rise when it reaches the district and flood low-lying areas. These low-lying areas are the river's floodplain. A floodplain follows the contours of the original natural shoreline that existed before the city was built. Areas near historic shorelines and streams are low-lying and highly flood susceptible. This is particularly true for areas that have been developed within a historic riverbed or in areas where historic streams have been buried. Sustained rainfall or snowmelt in a river or stream's watershed can cause flooding. Riverine floods have been a routine occurrence throughout the district's history. Historic riverine floods occurred in 1889, 1936, 1942, and most recently in 2010 at the Georgetown-Washington Harbor Boardwalk. Interior flooding can occur in areas far from the shore when heavy rains overwhelm the stormwater system, causing streets to flood. Interior flooding can occur even when the river elevations are normal. Interior floods occurred in 2006, 2010, 2012, 2019, and 2020. In 2006, storms caused flash floods, which inundated streets and several buildings in the Federal Triangle. Federal Triangle is one of the lowest points in the city, and as a result, stormwater tends to funnel towards that area during heavy rains. Ten years later, in 2016, we experienced another interior flood caused by heavy rain. Here we see the damage that an interior flood can have on transportation and travel. On September 10, 2020, a sudden violent downpour washed over the district, bringing several inches of rain in just a couple hours. The Washington Post weather gang reflected the next day, the deluge caused creeks and streams to rise up to eight feet in a single hour and overwhelmed drainage systems, bringing widespread flooding that inundated roads and stranded dozens of motorists. Both the Potomac and Anacostia rivers are tidal, meaning their levels rise and fall in regular daily cycles. This tidal connection to the Atlantic Ocean makes the district vulnerable to coastal flooding from tropical storms and hurricanes. A higher than normal tide can cause nuisance flooding on a sunny day with no storm in sight. Massive storms coming up the Atlantic coastline can push water up the Potomac River and cause storm surges, inundating parts of the city. The storm surge from Hurricane Isabel in 2003 caused coastal flooding in the district and across the river in Alexandria, Virginia. Climate change modeling suggests that by 2050, district tidal waterways will rise at least one foot and could exceed three feet. In 80 years, these increased levels could exceed nine feet. It may not be that far into the future that you or your family and friends experience flooding on a sunny day as a common occurrence along the Potomac and Anacostia rivers. Recent climate change data shows that the intensity of storms in the area is expected to increase. High intensity rainfall events or cloud bursts cause interior flooding by overwhelming the drainage infrastructure. Because our future is likely to have many more cloud bursts, protection of our communities involves transforming the district's urban water systems so they can keep up with these weather changes.
with climate change, sea level rise, and ongoing development in and around the city and the Potomac River watershed, the district can anticipate more extreme rain and snow events. Overtopping of rivers and creeks, storm surge from lower coastal areas, overland flows through neighborhoods far away from water bodies when catch basins, manholes, and pipes are over capacity. This vision of frequent flooding in our city demands action. The District of Columbia's Department of Energy and Environment, or DOEE, and partner Homeland Security and Emergency Management Agency, typically referred to as HSEMA, are working together to reduce flood risk in your neighborhood. This partnership is supported by the DC Silver Jackets. The DC Silver Jackets team is an interagency team of federal, regional, and district agencies working together to reduce flood risk in the district. This partnership works to mitigate flood risk for DC residents and property owners in four important ways. First, because of the city's participation in the National Flood Insurance Program, owners have access to flood insurance. Second, DOEE reviews the plans for development projects when they are proposed in floodplains. These reviews ensure future occupants are safe. Third, this team creates and runs flood risk models and updates flood maps. You can see if you are in a flood zone at dcfloodrisk.org. Finally, DOEE, HCMA, and DC Water, along with other city agencies, are working together to better understand our sewer and river networks, to conduct studies, and integrate models that help us select projects to reduce risk. These projects are constructed in flood-prone areas to deflect, detain, absorb, and discharge floodwaters. There are many completed construction projects already improving the district's flood-ready status. Projects like the 17th Street closure for the Potomac levee system deflect riverine and coastal flooding, while projects like the Duke Ellington Storm Keys Park reduces interior flooding. Keep watching this video series and learn more about strategies to physically build flood-ready community spaces. Thank you for watching. To learn more about actions you and your neighbors can take to be risk-ready, visit https colon slash slash doee.dc.gov slash service slash flooding.